The phenomenon spreads. The phenomenon. The phenomenon. Hi everyone, and welcome back to Big City B. I'm B. For those of you who are just joining me for the first time, for today's book review, I will be doing the Book of M by Peng Shepard. The basics for this book: the genre is going to be dystopian science fiction with a sprinkling of fantasy. There are some trigger warnings for this book, so make sure you check out down below in the description. Alrighty. Here's your summary. One afternoon in an outdoor market in India, a man's shadow disappears, an occurrence science cannot explain. He's only the first. The phenomenon spreads like the plague. And while those afflicted gain a new power, it comes at a horrible price, the loss of their memories. Okay, moving on into our characters for this book. There are quite a few characters, so prepare yourself. For track one, we have Ori, and Max. For track two, we have the Amnesiac, Ursula, Manuel, and Nas. For track three, we have Rojan, Hemu, Paul, Malik, and Vienna. Alrighty, let's move into things that I liked about this book. The first thing that I liked about the book was just the concept. The concept of multiple people losing their shadow and how that shadow is involved with their memories. I just thought that was very intriguing. The second thing that I liked about this book was the similarities of losing one shadow to having dementia or Alzheimer's. My grandmother had dementia, so I saw the progression of that when I was teen to college age. And then um, also a couple years ago, I worked with a woman who was starting to have early signs of Alzheimer's. And it's a terrible disease because you lose your memories, you don't know who your loved ones are anymore. In some ways, it's not as bad for the person who has it because they remember things about the past a lot. People who have since passed away are still alive in the world that they're living in, but it's also bad because they're scared. They don't know where they are, they can't remember certain things or or who you are to them and it's a little scary but it's also it's so so disheartening for the people around them because you remember them as they once were and they're no longer that person and you have to come to terms with that the third thing that i liked about this book was the different ways of dealing with loss of whether that was keeping a shadowless person with them uh, indulging their reality as it was or trying to save them i liked the range uh, that we were that we saw within this book of loss of either the person or a shadow just all of it it was fantastic the fourth thing that i liked about this book was the twisted powers that a shadowless person would gain and how they almost always turned nightmarish or uh, disastrous. It could have been so fantastical and it's just because people who were shadowless were so afraid and scared that these powers became such a scary thing that people feared. Let's move on to the things that I didn't like about this book. The first thing that I didn't like about this book was that I felt that the middle of the book was a little convoluted and we got a little lost within the story. Although I did chalk this up to feeling like one of the shadowless because as the book progresses, more and more people become shadowless. So it made sense to me that we would become a little confused and lost and the plot would be a little bit forgotten because the characters were forgetting. So that made sense to me, although it wasn't something that I particularly liked and I think it slowed down the book. The second thing that I didn't particularly like about this book was Naz's plotline, her storyline. I wasn't that intrigued with it. I didn't think it was that interesting. It kind of jumped around a lot. Whereas with Max and Ori, because they're the main storylines and plot points, we get more details with their storyline, but Naz, it's just, not gone into in as much detail so i i just i didn't love it that much to be honest i don't feel like she should have played as big of a role as she did within the book because we didn't get that much character development from her the third thing that i didn't like is more of a i wanted more and i wanted more of the story 
from Ursula and the band of people that she was with. I just felt like that whole caravan was really interesting and we do loop back around to them within the story, but I always I always wanted more. So like instead of the Nas plot line, I wanted more of Ursula and her band of people. Let's go on over to our Goodreads takes. The first thing that Goodreads didn't like about this book was they didn't know where Shepard was going with this book, which I don't really agree with. I feel like there are certain points where we do get lost, but overall I do think that Shepard had a really clear picture of where this book was going from beginning to end. And she brings up a lot of points of how the memories of a person is specifically the soul of that person and if our memories are gone are we really that person anymore and if we have the opportunity to save that person are they worth saving if they no longer have their memories so i feel like all of these points were pretty consistent throughout the whole book the second thing that goodreads said was that they liked the ending but they felt like the rest of the book was long and dense like i said i kind of agree with this where we get to the middle section and it's kind of a little convoluted and you get lost but if you think about it, all of that journey needed to be there to get to the end point and to, to see the journey that our two main characters, Max and Ori, go through to get to New Orleans. The third and final thing that Goodreads said is that they lost interest and felt the book was boring after about 50% of the book and they also feel like they couldn't relate to the characters anymore after that 50% mark. Like I said before, the middle, the middle is hard to get through. You gotta get through it, but it, it's fine once you get through it. And, and it's just that little chunk. It's just that, that little bit, it's so, small of the book. The book is long. It's a long book. I think it's about like 500 pages. It's like 60 pages of the book are hard to get through. And then the rest of it is fine and interesting again. The not being able to relate to the characters anymore, I don't understand. Is that because they didn't remember anything anymore? So you can't relate to someone who didn't have any memories? It just felt like that was weird. Like, of course you can't really relate to them because you haven't lost your memories but that doesn't mean you can't show empathy for those characters anymore and care about their journey. So that's my Goodreads takes for this book. Alrighty, on to the quotes for this book. Quote number one, there's a difference between when the mind forgets and the heart does. <sighs> this one. This book just made me so sad. It made me think of my grandma because you could tell when she would forget something but she would know in her heart that she was forgetting something and she knew it was important but she couldn't remember what it was and this happens like that sentiment happens in this book and it's just oh, it's sad <laughs> oh, i'm gonna try not to cry <laughs> quote number two time always leaves you behind this one and with my grandmother you just kind of felt like you wished time would stand still in either the, like the pre-time before she was having these dementia episodes or like you wish time would just pause oh, i'm gonna cry during this video would pause when she did remember because they were so especially towards the end so far and few between oh. but time keeps going so you just have to come to terms with that I knew this video was gonna be so emotional. Quote number three, no one escaped, either because they were someone who lost their shadow or they were someone who loved someone who lost their shadow. Try not to cry. <laughs> but again, this is true. For anyone who's had a family member or friend go through dementia or Alzheimer's, no one is spared in that disease. It affects both the person who has it and, and the people around them and you feel just so helpless, both parties, because there isn't a, a cure for it yet, yet. There's a lot of research going on and a lot of good research going on, especially with stem cells, but there is no like FDA approved, this will halt the progression of dementia or Alzheimer's or it will reverse any of it. So that's hard. Uh, no one, no one gets out of it without a, a, like an aching bruise. <laughs> Would I recommend this book to you? Yes, 
but I would ask that you please have patience through that middle section of the book. I think because this book rotates between three different perspectives, that of Ori, Max, and Nas, ah, uh, four, a little bit of the amnesiac as well. Hopefully that will be enough to keep you intrigued and wanting to know about each of their storylines, but it's just a good exploration of cherishing the memories that we have now because maybe you won't always have them and cherishing the people in your life because maybe you won't always have them and how we deal with that once they're gone. I'm very emotional about this book, but I liked it. I think you should give it a read. I think it's an intriguing concept. I think that Shepard executed it really well and the ending is fantastic. It broke my heart. And I think it, what I saw on Goodreads, it broke some other people's heart as well. And then other people were like, no, it had to happen that way because otherwise it would have been blah, blah. Ugh. It's a realistic ending. It's not a happy-go-lucky ending. And uh, that's all I'm gonna say about it because I don't want to spoil anything. I feel like this would be a really good book for a book club because there's just so much you could talk about and, and question and get different people's perspectives on everything. So I would, I would recommend it solely for that. Recommended it for your book club. Bees book club picks. You're welcome. Alrighty, everyone. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and make sure you're subscribed for future videos. If you want to drop me a comment down below, you know, do that too. Alrighty, everyone. All the best always. Bye.